So we are in Valhalla, New York at the Woodfield Secure Detention, a juvenile detention center in uh, Westchester County. This is our garden and today we're talking about cover crops. So why are cover crops good, Doug? Cover crops are used not to harvest, not to eat most of the time. They're used more to preserve and build the health of the soil and the entire ecology of the garden. So how do I know what types to plant? So here we have two different mixes of cover crop seeds. The seeds, this is a mix of oats, which is a grass, peas, which are legumes. These are radish seeds, these tops. And then there are clover seeds mixed in, they're very small. So those four together, the grass, the legume, the mustard family radish, all help to uh, improve the soil and contribute to the health of the soil in different ways. So this is one mix that we use. And when we, do you plant that? This is planted between August and mid-September. So this is a good time to plant. We're in the middle of September right now. And we use this where we know next season we're going to be planting early season crops. So the onions, the early uh, greens, and potatoes most likely and uh, anything that you're planting real early in the season because these this uh, oats and peas radish what they'll do is they'll grow a good bit before it gets too cold and then when they die they'll cover the soil like a mulch so in the spring all you have to do is pull back the mulch and you can plant right away you don't have to turn the soil or do any tilling when the soil is really wet in the spring so how do you know how much to plant um i usually go by uh, about for 250 square feet that you have, it's approximately one pound of seeds. Um, I most of the time just go by, by feeling, um, try and picture how many, um, a, a plant, you know, grass like oats need a, you know, a few inches of space between seeds for them to fully mature to their to their best you know capacity um, so when I'm spreading the seeds I will take that into consideration and spread the seeds as thinly or as thickly as the plants may need when they're mature so how late can they be planted in Westchester County the latest to get some growth um, mid-september is about the latest so this is on the very end edge where uh, today is September mm -hmm. I don't know, 16th um, and we're on the edge of, of using this because they need enough time before it gets too cold to grow. Okay. Um, whereas on the other hand, this other mix is uh, a mix of triticale, which is a grass, rye, which is a grass, winter peas, vetch, radish, and clover. And these will grow um, planted. So after the time for the, this mix has been used, you can use start using this mix. So this is best rye and vetch and triticale and clover are good to, to start growing towards the end of the season. So mid-September through November, you can sow these seeds as a cover crop. So what's the difference between this, what happens in the spring with this mixture as opposed to the, uh, the kind that dies in the winter? So this mix, this mix of rye and vetch and other cool season crops will grow up to the first couple hard frosts and then they'll go dormant and they'll die back for the winter time um, covering the soil somewhat and then in the spring they'll grow back early uh, once it gets warm again they'll, they'll regrow and so they will regrow and they'll reach their maturity in June May or end of May early June when they can be cut or crimped or um, used as, as mulch in some way. So cutting them and then planting your tomatoes and squash. Uh, th so this mix is best used uh, where you know you're gonna be planting your later season crops. So uh, what are we gonna plant today? So right now <coughs> we're gonna be under sowing this, uh, this, this kale with the mix of oats and peas and radish and clover and so this 
there's a few techniques of incorporating cover crops. If you have an open field garden plot, however big, you can simply broadcast the seeds um, over the field and then either rake them in or turn them in by hand. And I would recommend putting some kind of mulch over the seeds so that the birds and um, other animals can't see them as easily. It also, a mulch protects in um, the seeds once they start to germinate. What if so, you have weeds where you want to plant the, uh, the crop? So I, if there are weeds growing in the bed, I, I like to use the weeds as a mulch by pulling them up, shaking the soil off their roots, and then laying them right back down on top. And uh, the, doing it that way, the roots dry out and the plant dies. If it hasn't gone to seed, it's much, much better than if it has gone to seed. But it protects the soil, it covers the soil, and it leaves the plant that has a lot of nutrients already in its body in the field rather than taking it away somewhere else. So let's say you plant some seed here, how you incorporate that into the soil? So under sowing is simply taking uh, the seeds and spreading them right under the, right under the plants like this. How do you incorporate them? So once they're once they're set, then I will go through, and I usually wait to do this until I have a weeding to do. So um, this could be weeded. There's some grasses and, and things growing beneath the kale. Um, so I'll go through and I'll weed. And by weeding, after the seeds are sown, I'm also incorporating the seeds into the soil. And by bringing up the weeds and dropping them right back on top, I'm covering the seeds so that they are protected. And when they germinate, they have some protection against the sun and drying out. So the seeds are sown. And I'm mixing the, the soil with my hands like this getting the weeds up too and I'm pulling them into the bed using them to cover up the seeds that I just planted. The weeds won't take root again? Not if they are uh, shaken off and the roots are exposed. Once the roots are exposed to the sunlight, they'll dry out. Most plants will not survive that. Um, and the weeds will decompose and also contribute organic matter and mulch on the soil, for the soil. So this way, when the oats and the peas germinate and start to grow, they're growing beneath the kale and they don't need a lot of sunlight to grow. So they are growing um, together and not competing with each other, the kale and the cover crop. The kale is providing shade and cover for the cover crop to grow. All the cover crop is growing, enriching the soil for the kale. So that when the kale dies, come winter, there will be a stand of plants growing and the soil won't be bare for the winter. So Great. now the seeds are incorporated and covered and ready to grow. And where can we get seed? So locally in Westchester County, Mill River Supply in Bedford Hills is selling seeds that you can buy in packs of one pound. So if you're a gardener and have a relatively smaller space, 250 square feet or so, a pound of um, the oats or a pound of the rye mix will be sufficient for you to use. Uh, if you're a larger grower, um, we buy our seed from Lakeview Organic Grain up in Penyan, New York. And uh, depending on how much you need, they can send down um, a pallet's worth, which is about uh, 2,500 pounds of seeds. So 
anywhere from a pound to 2,500 pounds, you can source good organic seed locally for uh, cover crops. Great. Thanks a lot, Doug. You're welcome. Okay.